I will be taking you to 9th century England, where the death of a king had caused the arrival of the great heathen army. From the icy north, the sons of Ragnar had come from their dragon-headed longboats and had landed in East Anglia. However, their primary concern at the time was to avenge the death of a legendary king and warlord, Ragnar Lothbrok, who was a celebrated figure in Norse culture, being the protagonist in countless sagas and ancient chronicles. In the autumn of the year 865, the Viking fleet crossed the North Sea and landed in East Anglia, where they remained over the winter and secured horses. They then made their way north to Northumbria. Traditional sources claim that Ivar devised a strategy. The great heathen army was to sack the city of York to provoke King Ella into engaging the Vikings. Under Ivar's plan, the Vikings feigned retreat, which caused King Ella and the Northumbrians to give chase. This allowed the forces of King Ella to be encircled, which led to a mass slaughter. King Ella himself was captured, and according to the tale of Ragnar and his sons, he was ritualistically executed with the Blood Eagle. It states, Ivar and his brothers recalled how their father was tortured. They now had the eagle cut into Ella's back. Then all his ribs were severed from the backbone with a sword, in such a way that his lungs were pulled out. With the revenge of the Ragnarsons now complete, the sons of Ragnar would bide their time in Northumbria. To the south, King Edmund of East Anglia would prepare his forces for the onslaught to come. Edmund was born in around the year 840. He lived during one of the bloodiest periods of English history, when hordes of Viking warriors were devastating the English kingdoms, scorching churches and monasteries, and slaying the holy monks residing inside them. Many great churches and monasteries would be plundered, with all the inhabitants slain and all of the wealth taken. According to tradition, Edmund was called to the throne of East Anglia by its people in their moment of need. The earliest most reliable accounts represent Edmund as descended from the preceding kings of East Anglia, though, according to later legends, he was born at Nuremberg in Germany and was the son of an unknown king of Saxony. Although Edmund would have been around 15 years old, he was crowned in the year 855 and he had shown himself to be a good and just ruler, anxious to treat all with equal justice. However, this would not last long, as the great heathen army were heading south after killing the king of Northumbria in a ritualistic execution. What would this mean for the young Edmund? In the year 867, the Vikings would seize Nottingham in Mercia. From their base, they attempted to attack East Anglia more than once, and Edmund summoning the might of his kingdom resisted the forces of the great heathen army. King Edmund may have won some unrecorded minor battles against the Vikings, but they proved to be too strong and numerous. The Mercian king Buchred responded to the Vikings taking Nottingham by allying with the West Saxon king Ethelred of Wessex, and with a combined force, the two kings besieged the town. The Anglo-Saxons were unable to recapture the city, but a truce was agreed, whereby the Danes would withdraw to York. The army remained there for over a year, gathering their strength. The Norsemen would return to East Anglia in the year 869, this time intent on conquest. They had already taken Northumbria, and they were bent on bringing the Anglo-Saxon kings to heel, and taking the whole land for themselves. According to Abbo of Fleury's Life of St Edmund, this is what transpired. Ivar suddenly invaded the country just like a wolf, and slew the people, men, women, and innocent children. Soon afterward, he sent to King Edmund of East Anglia a threatening message, that he should submit to his allegiance, if he cared for his life. The messenger came to King Edmund, and boldly announced Ivar's message. Ivar, our king, 
bold and victorious on sea and on land, commands that you share your hidden gold hoards and give your ancestral possessions to him and that you shall become his vassal king if you want to stay alive since you don't have the forces that can resist him. Edmund responded, Never in this life will Edmund submit to Ivar the heathen war leader unless he first submits himself to the saviour Christ. The great heathen army then under the command of Ivar decimated Edmund's forces in an unnamed battle near Thetford. Edmund would allegedly survive the battle and returned to his hall to await the coming of Lord Ivar. According to Abbo of Fleury, this is what happened between the kings Ivar and Edmund. Seeing the multitude of pagans, Edmund dropped his weapon, imitating Christ. King Edmund, against whom Ivar advanced, stood inside his hall. The impious one then bound Edmund and had him beaten with rods. He afterwards had his flesh torn off with whips. In between the whip lashes, Edmund called out with true belief in the Saviour Christ. Because of his belief, because he called to Christ to aid him, the heathens became furiously angry. They then threw spears at him as if it were a game until he was entirely covered, resembling the bristles of a hedgehog. When Ivar saw that the noble king would not forsake Christ, but with resolute faith called after him, he ordered Edmund beheaded, and the heathens did so. While Edmund still called out to Christ, the heathen dragged the holy man to his death, and with one stroke, struck off his head. The king of East Anglia had just been ceremonially killed, now known to history as Saint Edmund the Martyr. His story became legend as he refused to become the puppet king of Ivar and didn't denounce his god in face of certain death. Historians portray Edmund as a less successful version of Alfred the Great, an English king who tried and failed to withstand the Vikings. Yet in death, he somehow became a symbol of English resistance against Viking domination. The evidence for an early development of a martyr cult around Edmund comes from Viking-dominated East Anglia. There were many miracles attested to Edmund during the reign of Edward the Elder. A blind man with a boy who accompanied him walked in a forest near Hoxton. Not seeing any shelter for the night, they decided to stop in what was a wooden chapel. On entering the chapel, they stumbled on the king's grave. Terrified of what was outside, they decided to stay in the church all the same and use the king's grave as their pillow. As soon as they closed their eyes, a divine light filled the chapel. The boy woke the blind man up in fear, but it turned out that the man's sight was restored by the grace of the saint's presence. Learning about the miracle, the faithful resolved to translate the martyr's remains to a more fitting place. Following the death of Guthrum, the king of East Anglia, many coins would be minted in commemoration of Edmund. In the year 890, several years after Edmund's death, pennies would be produced, reading, O St Edmund, the king, providing early evidence that he was venerated as a saint. Over 30 years after St Edmund's death had passed, it was decided that a large wooden church would be built near his grave. When his relics were uncovered, many believers became eyewitnesses of a great miracle. The saint's body lay completely incorrupt. His formerly severed head was attached to the neck, and all the wounds from the arrows were healed. The saint looked as if he were sleeping. Everybody thanked God for his mercy and translated the saint's relics to a church. Early in the 10th century, a church with a community of priests was erected in the town of Bodrixworth in Suffolk, where St Edmund's relics were kept for a time. This town, in which the first monastery had been founded by St Sigbert as early as the year 631, was renamed St Edmundsbury after St Edmund. 
and later obtained its present name, Berry St Edmunds. The kings Edward the Elder and King Ethelstan encouraged his veneration, and early in the 11th century, a monastery in honour of St Edmund was founded there. Canute the Great would also donate lands to the abbey. The stone abbey and church of St Edmund were built in the 11th and 12th centuries. At its height, the abbey was some 505 feet long. Bury St Edmund's Abbey was one of the largest in the country. It is now ruined, with only some rubble cores remaining, but two other separate churches which were built within the abbey's precinct survive. In 1327, the abbey was destroyed during the Great Riot by the local people, who were angry with the power of the monastery, and it had to be rebuilt. However, for a time, Bury St Edmunds was the richest and most powerful monastery in England. Edmund would die young, due to the superior forces of Ivar the Boneless, but he would be immortalised due to resisting in face of certain death. King Edmund of East Anglia would be regarded as a patron saint of medieval England until he was replaced by St George in the 15th century. However, Edmund's story is not forgotten. His refusal to become a puppet king for Ivar the Boneless turned him into a martyr, which gave many Saxons hope, and no doubt emboldened Alfred the Great's efforts against the great heathen army due to the saintly king's death. I hope you all enjoyed the video, if you did, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.